Hey guys, hey guys, it's Slamming Rush. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to deal with a team that is complete trash. So this is a topic that is in no way, shape or form covered by anyone enough in my opinion because it's very common to find yourself in situations where your team just loses like 15-0 and so I'm going to be covering that topic and I'm going to try to show you how you can deal with type those types of situations when you inevitably find yourself in them so that's the goal for today's video now in this case we're in our t54 lightweight we're on the map prokhorovka it's a standard game and we are top tier for this one albeit there's a bunch of tier eights there's no tier sevens in this game so what i like to do on proc when i start off kind of regardless of the tier and regardless of the tank type i'm in is i have this theory that if you spot anyone who goes to the hill you can deduce where everyone else is because if they're spotted on their way to the hill uh you know, obviously they're on the hill. If they're in the middle of the map, they'll be spotted too. And then anyone who's unspotted is going to be remaining in J2, K3. So my goal is to try to figure out everyone who's going to the hill so we can then predict everyone who's sitting on the J2, K3 area. And that's basically my goal. And the way I try to go about doing this for this game is by driving up to E6. And the goal here is to spot this cross. Now I'm going to pause it here because I end up getting YOLO'd, but basically I've made sure this circle is past this cross right here. And that's the route that most people take to get into position if they're going to the hill. So my goal is to spot that, spot anyone who's driving to, into position, and uh, maybe shoot at light tanks who are YOLOing and just trying to scout retardedly as, you know, as that happens. So we're in this position. The tortoise ends up shooting me. He shoots me for 230, so we know he's stock. I end up putting a shot into the low, so we ended up getting two shots off for the price of one. We didn't end up getting the information that I was looking for, so maybe if you were trying to make that play, you'd want to be a bit more aggressive. You could actually cross over the tracks and make a route something like this to try to scout that, but I managed to get some damage off of it too, so it does work out, and I wasn't doing anything redundant. Light tanks were doing every other scouting route on this map, so it does work out. So I fell back there, I was lit, I didn't want to get shot again, and I also didn't want to get hit by Artie, so I made sure I got D-lit, and then I'm in a position to once again shoot at people who are playing in the mid. I'm playing on the mid ridge, and there's a small window of opportunity at the beginning of the game for light tanks to make this play. What you'll find is if you're in the mid ridge for too long, you'll start getting focused down by Artie, you'll get shot by people on the hill, and you'll also get shot by people in J2. So knowing that, I point my turret towards the hill and I get the hell out of there because I don't want to get hit, direct hit by Artie. Luckily, Artie misses me and only hits me for 211, and this is where you're going to start to see the game go downhill. So. I've positioned myself in the middle of the map, and this is where you generally would default to once you're two minutes into the game. What you're going to notice is I'm not going to stick around here, and the reason for that is because they've got a, we've got a Progetto and a Charioteer who are being very passive. Now what happens is when these guys are passive is the enemy takes control of the hill, and if these guys don't spot them, they'll be able to farm anyone in the mid, and that would include myself. So what I'm like, I decide, hey, I'm not going to be able to stick around here when we've got the Charioteer and the Progetto not spotting. I might as well go do that for them because obviously I'm a light tank. I can go accomplish that for them. Now, I decide to leave the mid. The T92's in the mid, so it kind of works out. We, they don't really have any heavy tanks or mediums in the mid, and neither do we. So it's a fair fight for the T92 in the middle right there. And this is, like I said, where the game goes south. So what you'll notice, if you've been paying attention to the minimap, is the extensive number of tanks in the two line now we'll take a look to just look at the mini map right here because this is a big deal what you'll find is well just look at what the positioning of my teammates right here my team is being extremely aggressive considering the fact that we're two minutes and 15 seconds into the game the enemy has 13 tanks alive all of them are pretty much unspotted and it's like our whole team is pushing down the two line into a bunch of tanks that aren't spotted. And at this point in time, if a huge number of the enemy team isn't spotted, you can assume they're in this square back here or they're up here. And it's like, there's only so many tanks that can be in H0. So we know their entire team sitting at J2K3 and my entire team is gonna push into that. And the problem is they're pushing into camping TDs who are in bushes. And that's why this, this game goes south. It's the whole team pushed into camo to TDs and that's never gonna go well. So. Here I am in this position. I was going to scout the zero line. We do get eyes. They've already taken the top of the hill. At this point in time, we don't really have anyone except for a WT Panzer IV who is capable of shooting at the top of the hill. And so I decide not to put myself underneath them and be useless, right? If I'm in this position, I won't really be able to fight the rid the low, for example. So what I decide to do is I decide to fall back and we're going to focus on using our gun right here. Now that works out perfectly because as you'll see this team basically starts to melt really really quickly here so we're running back what i like to do is if i'm trying to shoot at the hill you want to come to this position this is an absolutely phenomenal position to 
basically shoot at that low from. What I what you have to be careful about if you're playing in a position like this is light tanks who cross right here. And that's actually going to be a problem for me as I play this game throughout. But basically, you want to position your tank such that you can shoot at the zero line and not get spotted by any light tank who crosses the E6 tracks. And that's what I'm trying to do right here. I'm trying to figure out that balance. And so we're in a position where we're waiting. We're down four tanks right now. We've got like four tanks left on the three line. And then the rest of our team is on the zero line. And so at this point in time, we need to try to win the hill if we want to win the game because if we can kill the low and anyone else who's on the zero line the score will be evened out but you know it's not really likely it's not going to happen especially if they play it well so what i'm doing is one we're trying to get shots i want to shoot at their ru i want to kill whoever's on the hill if i can but i'd also do understand that it's like probably not going to happen so i ended up getting spotted by that m4190 gf right there i'm going to drive to try to dodge people's shells the t2064 hits me the low misses so it kind of works out and now we're going to return to the bushes because what's going to happen is this well look at the scores we're down six tanks and this is where you can start to turn games around um or to try to salvage them for yourself because obviously like i only have 33 shells left i'm not going to be able to carry when there's 12 enemy tanks left so as a general rule of thumb, if you're in a situation like this, if I had been up at E0, what you'd want to, like if you were this Progetto right now, you'd want to run away and you'd want to run away to a position where you can shoot at people. Because what happens is when the enemy's winning, they are the ones who push into you. And on a map like this, or pretty much most maps, you want to take advantage of the fact that they have to drive across the open to shoot at you. So in this case, we can put shots towards the Skoda. Um, what's going to happen on a map like Proc is there's tons and tons of alleyways or lines that you can shoot at people who are driving across the field. So the goal is to exploit that and to at least make this game okay for myself, even if it's not good for my teammates. So you'll see this Yag Tiger has a line to push down. He's pushing down the one line. That gives me side shots on him as he chases down anyone who's on the three line. It's going to be the same thing for the zero line. Anyone on the zero line who's going to try to win the game is going to come down the zero line. I can exploit that. It's going to be the same thing for this Tortoise right here. If he wants to try to get kills and damage, which he will want to do, he's going to have to drive an open across an open field to do that so the position i'm in absolutely allows me to take advantage of people who are yoloing to get damage and that's that's the goal right here it's i want to take advantage of people who are yoloing to get damage because at this point the game is over and we're just going to look for shots and people so I'm going to fully aim these shots. I'm looking for shots in this tortoise. This guy's in the middle of the open. You'll notice I'm making sure I'm not spotted. Now, the value of that is uh, if people don't know where you are, they can't really take cover from you. And so that's why I'm here and I'm making sure I'm not lit. Normally, if I was in a, like, you wouldn't want to get spotted even if you were in a heavy tank in this situation because, you know, the tortoise doesn't see me. So he's not really inclined to try to avoid me. Now, I'm looking for shots in him as he goes towards the tanks he can see. And you can see simply staying unspotted at least least gives me shots on his side and so we're going to be able to put shots into this tortoise as he drives into my teammates right here now eventually as he goes dark you'll see if if i stop being able to shoot at the tortoise see if he looks at me for example right there the next best thing is for me to possibly shoot at this this low in the t2064 if i wasn't an idiot and drove out of the bushes right there so i did drive out of the bushes luckily i am in a light tank so the camo did work out and what i know is going to happen right here is i know there's three tanks on the a line or like the western side of the map and their next play is likely to drive over and they're going to start cresting the ridge right here so in this situation like this this is how you take advantage of it you need to push the side that's the weakest so here we've got the scorpion g a yag tiger and a progetto i can either fight those three tanks or i can stay here stay in like get surrounded by these guys and fight all the vehicles that are up here and so what i decide to do is I decide to push into the Scorpion. I miss an easy shot, he got lucky, and then he bounced me, so I got lucky, so it kind of works itself out. I end up killing the Scorpion, and now we're going to be fighting a Yag Tiger. And this is, <laughs> this guy's stuck in the middle of the open because of the situation he's in, and I'm going to be able to circle him. So this is where a lot of people screw up when they're playing lights, is they, they're really bad at circling people. In my opinion, if you're fighting a Yag Tiger like this, you don't want to be wasting shots on his track. The reason for that is it takes forever to kill kill a guy in this type of position and i need to kill him before his teammates are able to support him so wasting shots on his tracks and risking the bounce especially with 200 ping in my case is not worth it i'm just going to keep dancing circles around him there's nothing he can do unless he drives up lead i would want to track him if he tries to use cover but this guy isn't so there's no benefit to taking the risk of trying to track him i'm much better off just trying to damage his engine and set him on fire as you know he 
sort of just tries to circle play circles in the open now i get the kill on that guy that brings me up to a lot of damage and now we're in a situation where we've got a six on one now in this case i don't have enough ammo to win the game but my objective here is to once again try to fight plenty of one-on-ones and i also want to get away so what i decide to do is i decide to drive away i can assume that there's going to be a tank coming from where that tortoise is as i was looking towards the tortoise i hit a rock and you know, that pretty much seals the deal for my game. The RU251 is going to be able to chase me down. Already hits me, ends up tracking me. I repair the stun, and we're just going to be trying to kill this RU ideally before he ends up killing me. I would love to ram him in a situation like this, but it's like it's not going to happen. The Progetto is actually going to get behind me and get the kill right here. I'm not going to be able to even try to use my armor in this case and that's the game. But you'll notice I did get 5,800 damage and we were the last person to die. So that's like how you deal with this type of thing. In general, what I would suggest if you're, if you're playing light tanks and you're constantly finding yourself in situations where your team is constantly like dying, your main goal should be the last, to be the last person alive and it should be to shoot at people as they drive to kill you, right? So you can take advantage of opportunities as people drive into you. That's generally when you'll catch people out. So for example, I caught that Yag Tiger out in the open, and that's generally when you'll be able to get the most damage and at least make the game okay for yourself, uh, even if your team isn't, you know, doing the greatest. So let's go take a look at the end plates and we'll call the video there. All right, this is my first time seeing these end plates. After this game, I pretty much rage quit, but there you have it. That was a Mastery Badge second class. Bruiser, I don't know what these medals are. High caliber, I ended up getting 65,000 credits, 1675 XP with a premium account, which put me at 6, 000, uh, 679 XP, 6,057 damage and two kills. Um, that put me top on the team by pretty much every score by a long shot, and that's just the way it is. In the end, we fired 32 shots, 26 of them hit, 25 of them penned. We lost 11,000 credits, and that's just how it's going to work if you're firing 32 shells. So it's not much you can do in that case, but that is absolutely, like, <laughs> that's an example of an optimal situation where your team is dying, but that's the general theory, right? Like, you want to play normally. Uh, this is why I don't suggest using XVM, because what often happens is people who use XVM decide the game is over prematurely. You, you want to play the game normally normally and watch how your team is playing to figure out if you're going to lose or not and if you watch the situation unfold you'll be better informed to make plays from there so you know as you can see living to the end of the game is a huge deal if your team isn't playing well being the first to die and complaining about it in chat is not going to get you wins or damage and so uh, my suggestion would be is recognize your team if like if your team's going to lose, it's fine. Make sure you're not the first person to die. Make sure you're the last to die. And then make sure that opportunities to get damage present themselves and take advantage of them as they happen because they absolutely are going to happen, especially when people are YOLOing into you and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.